Sarah from My Two Cookies here. I use my projector in cookie decorating all the time for images, lettering, all kinds of stuff. I'm using it constantly. And I get a ton of questions about it too. So I thought we would do a video on how to set up your projector. I show how to use it in some of my online courses, especially my lettering course. Um, but I thought this video would be great for just the tech part of it. How to get it up and running, what cords you need, how to mount it, what buttons to push, just the tech side of getting your, your projector up and running. So here we go. I have two projectors that I love and they're both on my Amazon page. I'll link it in the description. My Amazon page is also on my social media pages in my bio. Both projectors are cordless, meaning that you can charge them and then use them without plugging them in. And then one of them is wireless, meaning you don't have to connect it with a cord to your phone or your laptop or your iPad. So the first one is a Pico projector. A lot of cookiers use this. I used it for a good two years and it was awesome and I still love it. It's a little bit cheaper. It's not wireless. It does charge so you can unplug it when you use it, but it's not wireless. You do have to connect it to your phone or your iPad or your laptop. It comes in a box like this. The second projector is a Caso brand. I guess that's how you say it. It comes in a box like this. It also charges, so you can unplug it when you use it, and then it is wireless, so you can have no cords attached to it, and that is awesome. It's a little bit more expensive, but it has a nice bright picture. They both have a nice picture, but I think this one's a little bit brighter, and then you don't have to use any cords. I do have cords attached to it right now because it's still faster for me. I've tried the app and done it wirelessly, and it's awesome. I just haven't gotten in a rhythm of it yet, and so I just use a cord still, and I just plug it right into my iPad, and I'm ready to go. So. It's still faster for me to use the cord, so that's why I have the cord in there. But you can do it either way. I have this projector mounted to my Archon mount right now. I love, love, love this mount. I'm going to go into more detail about it in another video, and I can show you all the things that it does and the attachments you can get for it. I do have a coupon code for it in my description, um, but I love this mount. I'm just gonna show you kind of basically how to get it on the mount. This is the mount that I used for a long time, probably a couple years. Um, it's missing the top piece. I think it finally broke off, but this is on my Amazon page and it served me really well. It's a great mount and it's a cheaper option. So whatever mount you decide to use, they mount pretty much the same way. So you'll usually have either a screw on the back that screws right into your projector or a clamp that you've probably used with your phone before. So if you look on the back of either one of these projectors, there's a little hole that you can screw directly into a mount that has a screw that's right behind this little wheel here or it clamps on like this. And then you're going to project downward. So wherever that projection comes out, that's of course facing down onto your cookie. Okay, so let's talk about what cords you need for your projector. They both come with their charging cord. This one's plugged in already and plug it into the wall to charge it. And then for projecting, both projectors need some sort of HDMI cable. Um, it's attached here. HDMI cable, this one's really long. Get a shorter one, get a three foot one or something, and an adapter. So an HDMI cable and an adapter. The Pico projector actually has a mini HDMI on this side. So your cable is gonna have mini HDMI to a regular HDMI. This projector is regular to regular, so HDMI to HDMI. And then you plug the HDMI into the adapter, and then the adapter plugs into your phone or laptop or whatever you wanna use. This adapter will be different for whatever devices you're using. I use Apple products, so iPhone, iPad. I have this adapter on my Amazon page if you wanna go find it there. Um, if you have an Android or you're using some non-Apple product, you're gonna need a different adapter, but you'll need an HDMI on the side and then whatever plugs into your phone or, or you know, laptop on this side. And that's it, anything you see on your screen, on your phone or whatever, uh, will project directly onto your cookie. You don't need a special app or program or anything like that. Whatever you're seeing on your screen is just projecting directly onto your cookie. Okay, just a few things as a cookier that we need to know to run the projector. That's to turn it on. This one is over here. You just hold down the button for a couple seconds and it will take a few seconds to turn on. This Pico projector has a power button here that you hold to turn it on. Also, when you're charging this projector, don't leave it in the middle or in the on position. Flip it to the charging position here and it'll charge a lot faster and more efficiently. You'll know this projector is charging when these lights are flashing. 
and there's actually four lights. So when all four lights have come on, that means that it is completely charged. They both have a focus button. Pico has one here. If you just need to focus the image and get it sharper, this one has it right here. So when it turns on, it comes up with this menu. Um, this is asking you how you want to connect with your HDMI cable or wirelessly here. And then some other settings that you can play around with. I'm gonna connect with the HDMI. So I just use the arrows on the side to change the menu or change what it's selecting in the menu. And when it gets to HDMI, then I click OK. And I have it plugged into this phone already. You can plug it in at any time before or after. And look, it's projecting right away. So you unplug and the projecting goes away and you can plug it in at any point. Might take a second to find it. Now when you're filming the projection, it kind of flickers and that's just because of how the video works, but it doesn't flicker in real life. Now resizing your image, you can raise or lower your projector with the mount, or you can do whatever you do on your phone to make things bigger or smaller to match the size of say your cookie. I want to fit this to my cookie. I can just enlarge the image on my phone and it'll enlarge the projection. And then it looks like it needs a little bit of focusing. So I'm just gonna use that focus button. And you can maybe see how it turns from blurry to focused. Yeah, it's kind of wild and crazy. One thing that can happen is your image is projecting upside down. And I used to actually change my images in my phone and flip them upside down in my phone. But then I found out the projector has a setting that you can just flip the projection. So you don't have to flip any of your pictures in your phone. So you just go into your menu, into settings. So I'm gonna use my arrows here and get to settings. Click okay. And then image, click okay and then projection mode. So there's front, let's see, I need to click okay to select that. And then front, rear, we'll reverse it side to side. So you could reverse your, Im or flip your image horizontally if you wanted to. And then, oops, projection location, click okay and you could flip it to desktop or ceiling is what they call it in this one. But that will flip your projection the right way that you want it. One question that I get a lot is how do you keep your hand from blocking the image or blocking the projection? There's a couple things that I do. Um, I just change the angle of the projector a little bit so that the bottom comes toward me a little bit. So it's just angled a tiny bit and it usually doesn't matter with the image you're projecting. There is a setting in the menu that's called Keystone if you wanna just change it using the menu and it'll kind of change the angle of that too. But I just quickly do it with my mount. And then another thing I do is pipe coming in from the side. So I'm right-handed, so I come in from this side so I'm not blocking my image. I don't pipe straight down. That obviously blocks and makes shadows. So I kind of just have to come in from the side and it blocks very little. If I'm doing something where I feel like I have to block it a little bit, I do just kind of memorize a little piece and then I'll pipe it and then I'll pull it away and look at it, kind of memorize where it's at and do it really quickly, just a little piece at a time if I have to. But most of the time I don't block the image if I come in from the right like that. So that's it. Hopefully that is an easy way to set up your projector. There's a lot more settings you could play with in there like brightness or whatever else you feel like you need, but I never had to. That was enough for me to get going with my projector. So enjoy your projecting and let me know how it goes in the comments. Let me know if you do it any different ways or any tips or tricks you have. And please, please, please subscribe and it helps me out so much. Thank you so much and I'll catch you later.
don't know what I was gonna say next. I can't do it. I can't speak my words. But any attachment that you have can be used about the feeling. Whoa, a leg. Okay, <laughs> go away or be quiet or something. <sighs> I wanna quit a little wanna 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 Should I try it again? Nine. Nine. Gregory. Nine. Gregory. Nine. And we are rolling. I can't remember anything I was gonna say, but are you too close on my face? I feel like you're too close on my face. Nine. No. You're too close on my face. Yes you are. Okay, and rolling. Subscribe, subscribe, and like and all the good things. I don't know.